J.T. Crowley is talking books. On this show, you'll hear from emerging talent and seasoned veterans from around the world. Hello, everybody. I'm J.T. Crowley, and today I'm delighted to invite Adrian Kuistra from Queensland in Australia to talk about his three books that make up the Fletcher Baby Six series. The books are aimed at young children. The illustrations done by Sam Thomas beautifully enhance the storylines in each of the books. While the books tell a simple story, Adrian is trying to get across a message to kids about the animals that are depicted. Adrian is a young man living with cerebral palsy and is non-verbal. His disability, though, hasn't stopped him living his life to the best of his abilities and certainly doesn't impact on his creative mind when it comes to writing. Adrian is supported by his team of carers and which includes his mother. Today, Adrian is being supported by Karen, who is acting as Adrian's voice. The three books that we're going to chat about today are Fletcher's Baby Sits a Crocodile, which is the first in the series, followed by the second, Fletcher Baby Sits a Goat, and finally the last book so far in the series, Fletcher Baby Sits a Camel. That's enough of my waffle, everybody. Let's invite Adrian and Karen on to the show. Adrian, Karen, come and join me. Hi, good evening. Lovely to be here. And Ada uh, as well. That's absolutely fabulous, everybody. Adrian, for me, it's been a wonderful experience getting to know you and what your books are about. But before we open the books, would you care to tell the listeners, the viewers, the audience a little about yourself? So Adrian says, hi, John, it's great to be able to talk to you today. Well, listeners, my name is Adrian. I'm nonverbal, so I communicate using facilitated communication. I type and my facilitators like Karen read my words out for me. Would love to hear from anyone with any questions about what this is about, as I'm super passionate about educating people with, about different forms of communication. And I know FC can be a bit confusing for people at first. Other than that, I'm just a guy who loves to write. And I think I have the unique way of seeing the world and love to use my writing to share my worldview. Adrian, let's take the audience to your first book, Fletcher Babysits a Crocodile. Of course, Australia is, has lots of crocs, uh, so I suppose it was only natural that you chose to put a crocodile in your first book. But I understand, having looked at the books, that there is an underlying story, message, meaning behind each animal you have chosen. So why in this book have you opted for a baby croc? And what message are you trying to convey to the kids in this book? So Adrian says, well, John, the Fletcher Baby Slit series originates from my own nephew, Fletcher, finding and helping baby turtles on a beach. The story of this really captured my imagination, but I wasn't in love with a turtle being a co-star of the story. So I was a bit stuck creatively. Now, I live on the Sunshine Coast where Australia Zoo is, and you might know about Steve Irwin, who founded the zoo. They're very passionate about crocs there. One day while we were visiting the zoo, I got to hold the baby croc and I was alarmed at how pointy his teeth already were. I pondered and dreamt and finally with a writing prompt at Epic, a creative writing group I attended, the story of Fletcher Baby Since the Crocodile was born in my mind. I was captivated by the idea that young children could be, that a young child could be the tamer of a crocodile in a domestic suburban setting. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. Um, Adrian, did you enjoy working with Sam Thomas, the illustrator, to bring about this rather brightly coloured, eye-catching book? Because for me, the pictures really enhance the storyline and you get almost, you almost get the same storyline from the illustrations alone. Adrian says, Sam Thomas is this amazing and kind of quirky guy. 
I met Sam and immediately knew it was going to be his artwork that would be in my book because we kind of got each other. Sam really brought the story to life with his work and a combination of watercolor and digital art is really unique, just like us. The reading level is aimed for primary school readers, but we didn't want to exclude younger readers from enjoying the books. So it was very important that the art artwork told the story as well. I absolutely agree. Um, Adrian, where did you get the I, you know, where did the idea originate from to end each book with some fun facts, um, a game, and in this instance, a crossword puzzle? So Ada says, if my, if my memory serves me, I think Sam initially came up with the idea of including educational ex activities in the book as well. And this idea really caught me. The idea of being able to provide the book as a learning resource in school really took to me. The book is in a few local school libraries currently, but we would love to see them as a regular learning resource in classrooms too. That's, I think that's a brilliant idea, Adrian. Um, you know, and I think also that, you know, for young kids to go and get to read your books free is very, very important because kids need to read books. Um, Adrian, let's turn to the second book in the series, Fletcher Babysits a Goat. Why a goat and a farm scene? I like the scenes where the goat is eating Fletcher's yellow t-shirt and Fletcher is running indoors to get out of the goat's way. They're fun, aren't they? Adrian says, I really wanted this series to be relatable to all kids. The first book is set in suburbia and it felt natural that the second book might take place in a farm or country setting. My friend told me a story of running from their neighbor's goat as a child to climb the fence to get to their favorite climbing tree. And once again, the story took off in my imagination. I think this book is really fun to read and is actually my favorite of the three by a slim margin. Hmm, I wonder where that storyline came from. There you go, everybody. Um, Adrian, I noticed that in all the books that you don't give a name to the other characters in the stories, particularly the animals. Was that intentional? So that Fletcher remained the dominant figure with each plot? So Adrian says the animals are unnamed simply because they are not typically domesticated animals. They are wild animals and not a pet in the typical sense. It was important to me that the readers kept their wild nature in mind as Fletcher found a way to calm them and bond with them. I felt by naming them, they lost some of the innate wildness which left an which felt like an injustice to Fletcher's hard work. Hmm. I wondered why, because when I looked at all the books, everybody, I thought only the main character is being uh, given a name and the animals and, and, and other um, characters, no names. So I thought, alas, now I know. There you go, everyone. Now, for me, Adrian, out of all the books, the last book, Fletcher's Baby Sits a Camel, was the most enjoyable. I think any young kid that loves adventure is going to love this. A, fi a flight, a circus. Was this storyline based on things you loved as a child and are camels an animal that enamors you? So much so you created a story about one. So Adrian says, I'm so glad you enjoyed the story, John. I love that we have different favorites and that that is why each book has a, was in a different setting. Suburban life, farms, and this time we went to a busy city. As a child, I loved a circus. It was another world to escape to where strange things could happen. Camels are very humorous to me. I have a really fun memory of one of my old support workers having a camel spit on them, which has always brought me much joy remembering this moment. And I wanted to capture that memory in a way. Wow. Um, I suppose, you know, uh, for a lot of us, you know, capturing our own memories is very, very important. And, but for you, Adrian, to put your memories in these books is just absolutely amazing. And I think kids are going to, have to absolutely love them. 
The illustrations are bright, they're cheerful, they're fun. And these are really fun books. And they're great books for grandparents and parents who are sitting down at bedtime to you know, read uh, the stories or get the child to read the stories to them. They are fabulous stories. Adrian, are these books based around your own experiences in life and do you enjoy writing them and getting involved in their creation, working with others to bring the story and the messages to life? So Adrian says, the stories have been inspired by my own experiences and also experiences of those in my life who I love. We take on our loved one's stories as our own, I think. I love writing these stories. They're different from the writing I usually do, do, which is more prose and poetry. And it was really fun to branch out to this world of writing. I love the collaborative nature of working with Sam, and it's been an adventure from start to finish. Mm, there you go. What's next uh, for you, Adrian, in terms of your own life and writing? Are there any more books to follow uh, in Fletcher Babysit series? Or are you looking to write about new adventures with different characters or possibly venturing into a different genre and age category? So Adrian says, John, I have so many projects in the works, but as for Fletcher, at least for now, he's retired at the ripe old age of 12. His pet, his, pet, <laughs> his pet sitting career was rather illustrious, wasn't it? Right now, I have two main projects. The first is a collaborative musical theater full-length play that, I, what, that I've co-written with the script and the lyrics of the song. We have found an amazing director and a full band, full cast, and are waiting on the ground to pr proceed with rehearsals. The other project is my band, and they're called The Legless Nomads, where I'm the main songwriter, lyrically, and my bandmate, Laurie, sings and composes our songs. We have big dreams of becoming rock stars. I suppose, you know, that's a wonderful one to have big dreams. And I love the cushion in the background. If you dream big enough, anything can come. It's a, you know, if you ever look at the cushion, everybody, in the back there, in the corner, that really does sum Adrian up, everybody. Adrian and Karen, thank you very much for joining me today from Down Under in Australia. Adrian, who is it? It was an pleasure. <laughs> thank you, John. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Adrian. So, everybody, as I normally end the um, podcast, I simply like to say thank you for listening. Wherever you're in the world, stay safe. Until next time. Mm -hmm.